loads and loads of rigs, all freshly tied. Let's have a look inside my summer rig tray. As you can see, there are six trays there and a lid. I've got shallow carp, deep carp, shallow F1, deep F1, specials and silvers. So, I mean, I used to try and just bring just a couple of trays and cram everything into two trays and, um, you know, putting three or four rigs on loads of winders and things. And um, But to be honest, because I'm swapping and changing so much, I've just bit, bit the bullet and I just carry several trays of rigs now. It makes sense just to keep it all nice and neat. So that's what I do. These are only rough guys, the names that I've put on, but I know what's inside just by looking at the label. So uh, without further ado, let's look inside. Right then, we'll deal with our shallow carp tray first. So I'll just take the whole lid off. Now, um, also I tend to keep um, a couple of hook length boxes in there as well. There's a load of space there. I know somebody put winders up there, but I, I just put some hook length boxes and all my leftover rigs are often just chucked in the top after a session as well. Just a bit of useless, useless advice for you there. So um, so these are all my, let me just let, take that one off. These are all my, um, what I class as shallow rigs and shallow carp rigs and margin carp rigs. So hopefully you can see that there. All different sorts of shapes and sizes. So, um, right, for general margin fishing, I, I helped design a, a float called the Mojo, which um, Gaz Malin makes for Malman floats. Um, and I tend to use that in a 0.3 and a 0.4 down the side still. It's just a short stubby float. Hopefully you can see that there. A little short stubby float. And uh, generally just fish with a solid bulk uh, above the hook length. And that's what I generally use for most of my um, sort of big carp margin fishing, two to four foot deep. And um, I also have I've got some smaller ones for airy fairy margin fishing where they're a bit cuter. Um, but generally I go with a 0.3s, 0.4s with bulks and um, they're all on 020 line. Um, and I will use these for shallow fishing when there's a bit of a chop on the water because I tend to find a lot of nice two mil bristle. It's nice and easy to see. These have got a glass stem, two mil bristle, my ideal big carp combo, nice and strong, nice and visible, nice and buoyant for all sorts of baits. Doesn't get dragged under too easily. And I will use these for summer F1s as well, fishing up to islands and stuff like that. But primarily, these are margin carp rigs and um, they're all on 020 line. Some of them I'll di tie direct to like a size 12 hook, but I will chop the hook off and put um, and pull a hook length on if I want to fish 016, 014 or what have you. So they're my um, margin rigs and shallow carp rigs. And for actually catching carp shallow, I prefer, if you can see that there, uh, more of a balsa dibber style float. Now I've coloured these silver, but these are an old Preston Tyson float. I've whipped the eye on a lot of them to stop the eye being pulled out and I've put a glass stem in them. Again, my perfect combination, a glass stem, perfect for carp fishing. Um, I've got some loose ones here where you can actually see. Hopefully you can see that. I've just whipped the eye and then I've uh, varnished over it and everything. So it's just mega strong, nice, no nonsense float with a side eye, perfect for using a longish line casting it around your peg and fishing for proper carp in general and also I'll use these in a 0.3 gram for my mugging float as well so uh, with a longish line meter meter and a half just casting it at cruising fish but for normal carp shallow fishing six mil pellets eight mil pellets whatever um, worms things like that um, that's what I use so a uh, great little float no nonsense again glass stem I prefer a glass stem for general carp fishing if I can so um, and as I've said on previous videos, if I have used a rig, I'll just turn it the other way on my winder tray. So I know it's been used, but it's probably long enough and I've probably not caught enough fish on it to, um, to be able to use it again. Um, if I've caught a hundred pound on a rig, I'll probably retie it. But um, I've got no problem reusing rigs whatsoever, as long as you think the rig's still strong enough, especially on our 20 line. Um, no problem at all reusing rigs. And what I might do is just change the hook length. So, um, and the only other rigs in this tray that are a bit special are um, these little sort of beanie style floats. I don't know if you can see that. They're just in line. It's just literally 020 or 023 line, about that long. And um, I just have a nice size 12 hook on and that's my slapping rig for big carp fishing an eight mil, sometimes even an 11 mil pellet. Just slap, slap, slap and you catch some great big carp on some of these venues these days. A bit of a specialised rig, we might do a little video on that one day, you never know. So, um, but that's the only other rig I have in this tray. Um, me, me short slapping rigs, they're in line. The line goes straight through the middle of the body. 
Um, I think for a no-nonsense float like that, you don't want to get any tangles. And it's such a positive rig that there's no advantage to having a side eye or anything like that. It's so direct and tangle free and really, really strong. So in line, if I want it really, really strong. But generally, all my shallow carp rigs, I like a side eye because I'm normally chucking the rig past the pole tip and everything when I'm shallow fishing. So a side eye is definitely an advantage. I never use an inline float if I'm using a long length of line because the float pulls funny and the, and the surface tension pulls the float down and everything like that. So anyway, that's my normal sort of shallow carp rigs. So they're my margin rigs and my shallow rigs. Right then, tray number two. And this is my deep carp um, tray. And these are 90% um, Pablo RWC hooks. Hopefully you can see those. Absolutely fantastic float. They would be because I designed them. <laughs> and uh, these are uh, go from 0.2 right up to 0.7 of a gram. You can see that there, beautiful float. Again, glass stem, two mil bristle. Um, that's like a hybrid style eye that won't get pulled out. Um, so mega, mega strong. I've never broke one of these ever. Um, not had any fall apart, no tips snap or anything like that. Mega, mega strong. These are all on 020 line and I've got four of each um, from well, I've actually got some smaller ones, 0.15 grams, but actually um, commercially available, 0.2, right up to 0.7. And they cover all my proper carp fishing in deep water, sort of three foot plus, mostly four foot depths and, and, and higher. I have got some one gram gurus um, just for extreme depth places. If I was going to fish Hayfield Lakes or somewhere like that, or um, the Match Lake at, um, at White Acres, Pollowin Match Lake, then I might use some grand ones and these only go up to 0.7. But that's it, that's my deep cart rig, all on 020 line, no messing, nice positive shots, nothing smaller than a number 10, mostly in number nines, number eights, making up all those rigs. But yeah, we'll use these ref ones as well, especially in the summer. But primarily these are for proper cart fishing, places like Makings Fishery, Moorlands Farm, you know, places like that, absolutely ideal. Right then, tray number three. Now these are my shallow F1 rigs, um, or light carp rigs. And for all my sort of shallow F1 rigs fishing up to up to the far bank on um, where it's really shallow, sort of two and a half foot or less, 30 inches or less, I love my Pablo RWC tanks. Again, it's a float I designed, basically the same as my Mojo, but a little bit stubbier. Um, two mil bristle, glass stem, I've got them in 0.3 and 0.4 gram, but mostly in the 0.3 grams. They take five number eights, which is perfect for um, sort of mud line fishing, fishing in 10 inches of water to two and a half foot of water. Absolutely ideal, nice heavy float. These are all on 018 line. If I want something a little bit more finesse, I've actually been using some of the Guru Slim Carbons. They've been nice. Um, I was using them a bit in the winter as well for sort of winter F1 fishing, strung out little rigs. I've got some little short, I think they're um, called ARs. Um, again, sort of kinky F1 shallow fishing. But in the main, if I am shallow fishing, I like an inline dibber. I've been using inline dibbers for two or three years now at least. And I'm still surprised that so many people are still using a side eye dibber for F1 shallow fishing when they're using really short lines. If your pole tip's right above the float, then you can't beat an inline dibber, I don't think. As long as you can control it and get right above the float, use back shot if you have to, then it's tangle free and it's brilliant for speed fishing. So um, I use inline dibbers a hell of a lot. These are all different sorts, the old Preston pinks, some old um, uh, J range dibbers, some Garblino ones. I butchered most of them and put glass stems in again. Bit of a theme here with glass stems, but I like carbon and glass stems generally. Um, they don't tangle so much, but I've got some ultra shallow little stubby ones. I'm not scared to chop the stems right down as you can see on there. So we'll put that down to show you. These were, an, that was an old sensor CCX dibber with a long stem, but I've chopped the stems right down. Hopefully you can see that. So that's if they're catching like, you know, eight to 10 inches deep and that sort of float might come into play. But again, in line, I don't want, when I'm speed fishing for F1s, I don't want to get any tangles. And when you're using a short line and get over the float, in line is best. If I'm casting the rig around with a longer line, side eye is best. It's all down to the surface tension and, and how your float sits, depending a side eye lets your float sit nicely. Whereas if it's in line, unless you're directly over the float, an in line float is pretty much useless. So, um, but brilliant for F1 shallow fishing. And then I've got some little short 
cut down Mojo's 0.1 gram again, very similar to how I use the ARs. I have got some jigger floats, but to be fair, in the main, I tie my jigger rigs up fresh in the morning or I leave them on my top kit because you don't want the kinky line which stops your jigger rig working properly. Yes, you can straighten it out and I only use jiggers on 018 line. A lot of people use 020 line for jigger fishing, but to me that's too thick and if there is any sort of kink, your jigger rig don't work properly. I used to use like a crystal float for a cut down crystal float for a lot of my jigger fishing, but I colour them in now. There's a theme here, I do colour a lot of my floats in grey. I used to colour them all in white, but I've gone to grey now, and uh, like a silvery grey. And that's just, I don't want anything, I don't like a black float when shallow fishing. It's too much of a, a harsh silhouette. Um, and I'm softening the silhouette a little bit with grey or silver, I think. So, um, so yeah, li a little bit less obtrusive. Obviously they're gonna still see the float, but um, I still prefer a light coloured float if I can when shallow fishing. Um, but I've coloured these in as well. These were a crystal float, but um, an international once showed me, and it was a bit of an eye opener really using crystal wagglers and he refused to use them when it was really, really sunny because he says on a clear water on a sunny day, the light will go through those crystal floats and actually glow up like a prism. And um, so that's the last thing you want really. I want them to be unobtrusive. So, um, so I've no longer used a crystal style float. I think they glow up too much um, on a sunny day. And generally if I'm catching sun, um, shallow, it's sunny. So, uh, so I'll in all my floats. So they're my shallow rigs, my F1 shallow rigs and F1 uh, margin rigs and fishing anything up to sort of three foot of water tops. So let's move on to my next tray. And this is what I class as my deep F1 um, tray and it's predominantly basically slim floats. So as you can see there, hopefully you can see there, these are all the same shape. It's a bit of a mishmash this tray at the moment. I'm working on different prototypes and got different things on the go at the moment. So it's not as pretty as some of my other trays. There is a bit of a mishmash, but I've got, um, but as you can see, they're all this nice, slim, slim body. And uh, if you're in doubt with what shapes of bodies, just go with that sort of shape. I've got numerous floats like that. I've got the old, um, let's have a look, see what we've got. So all these floats, similar shape body. If in doubt, just go with a nice slimish body float, okay? And then all you need to worry about is the tip diameter and the stem, depending on the conditions and what you're after. So, but these, but these rigs in the main are one and a half or 1.8 mil bristles, um, all hollow bristles, a mixture of carbon, titanium and wire stems. Wire stems that definitely offer stability, but they wobble around too much. And if you're really trying to catch fast, I find a wire stem can actually cause problem could give you tangles if you're not careful i actually prefer using carbon if i can but um wires are definitely have their day especially if there's a bit of a chop or a bit of a wind and these other rigs here are just heavier floats i've got some short stubby wire stem bodied floats and they come in handy somewhere like barston lakes it's really heavy heavily tow and um really choppy and really windy and lots of undertow. Um, Bonsai Lake at Lindome was the same. I always found these style of floats work really well. Anywhere that's heavily wind affected and loads and loads of tow, go for a wire stem, a bit more of a slightly rounder body and a slightly thicker tip just to combat that extra chop and everything. But in the main, you can't go wrong with um, a slimish float, one and a half mil or 1.8 mil bristle. I prefer a carbon stem for most situations, but if the wind and stuff is bad, or there's a lot of chop, or you just need that extra little bit of stability, then go for wire, or the titanium wire. So, right, next tray. Put that one there. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll go on to my silver tray next, if I can get this one apart. And then we'll, then we'll move on to my specials. So this is my silver tray, no nonsense. These are 1.2 mil plastic tips, which I prefer for silver fishing if I can. These are Malman Secrets. I've got some new floats, which I'll slowly be changing from, I think. And these were made specifically for me. These are um, by Pablo RWC floats again. And they're, um, they're called blades and they're awesome, basically. <laughs> Carbon stem, plastic tip, ultra, ultra strong, perfect sort of um silverfish sort of winter f1 float and that's what these are these are for silverfish and winter f1s maggot fishing pr pr primarily but i will fish pellets and stuff from them as well but it's mostly maggots i fish in the winter and that's what i use i love my secrets to be honest but i will be using the blades quite a bit next year as well um i've got some slightly bigger ones 4b16 preston f1 fines because these don't go big enough for me and and if the weather's choppy 
I've got some uh, Malman Speedy Titans as well. Um, again, they've got a 1.2 mil plastic tip. They've got a titanium stem for a little bit more stability around the body if the winds and everything's a little bit more choppier. But to be honest, I mostly use the secrets. It's very rare these come out actually, the, the, um, the Speedy Titans. I'm so, so used to using these secrets, even in bad conditions, they just work really nice. So a really nice vote for me. Right then. Right then, let's move to my last tray, which is what I call my specials tray. And there's some really, really quirky floats in here. If I just lift these out, they're my paste floats. Again, some nice Pablo RWC patterns there. Long bristle, glass stem, very, very slim. Not a lot of sharp, three or four number eights, four, you know, three to five number eights tops. And I've got some um, big H floats um, and some more um, Pablo RWC P1, P2 floats which are absolutely brilliant for shallower pace fishing in shallow and um, pace fishing down the margin and that but nice long bristle floats these are all on 020 or 023 direct usually to a very big size 12 hook and i just tie them direct and store them on the wireless direct no nonsense really really strong if you pace fishing you're after big fish and there's a good chance of foul looking an odd fish as well so you need a strong rig so I don't put any any weak knots um, or anything in my rig if i can help it when pace fishing so that's those rigs they're my pace rigs and um Oh, incidentally, my silverfish rigs are generally on 014. Um, my winter F1 rigs, 014 line. My uh, F1 rigs are generally on 018 line uh, in the summer. And then my summer carp rigs are all on 020. And that serves me really well, really. So my next tray, I've got some right strange floats in here. There we are. So again, these are some more F1 paste floats, slightly bit more finesse for fishing like pea paste and stuff. Some nice, it's just a little bit more finesse to these floats. So um, certain times of the year, a little bit of paste works really well on F1 venues and these floats come out for that. I've got some mega, mega strong inline floats. These are just an old Colmic pattern. I think they were, um, they take, I think they take six number eights. And these are on an 025 mil line. Um, no nonsense, really, really strong rigs. I made these after a match at Meadowlands Fishery where the fish were just ginormous and we were fishing banded eight mil pellets and they were seeing people off left, right and centre. So 025 rigs and somewhere really, really snaggy, these bad boys come out. <laughs> and that's on feeder line, it's not on normal mono, it's actually on feeder line as well. So they're just really, really strong. If I was in a lily bed and it's a deep lily bed or somewhere really, really snaggy, some places at Decoy Lake, some pegs like that are a bit like that, where you've got deep lily beds and stuff. These rigs will come out for that as well. I've got some, um, these are all on 023 line direct. I've got five daisy chained, all 023 direct to a size 12 MTX4 hook. No nonsense, take no prisoners rigs. Um, I was recently fishing uh, Larford Lakes and I was using my margin pole 20 to 22 slick and these rigs were exactly what I needed for that. I hadn't got them with me at the time. I went straight home and I wrote and I tied these up. I got eight out, but I lost one with my margin pole, but I would have got them all out, I think, if I was using these rigs. And um, again, I've got some smaller rigs all on 020. These are all in line. Um, if I just show you, yeah, these are, I've adapted these floats. So if I want a short float, but with a bristle, I've adapted it so I've got a little hole I've melted in the base of the bristle and I've got a hole in the top so actually the line comes out the top of the hollow bristle and when you're fishing in snags, reeds, lilies there's nothing to catch or get stuck whereas a side eye works like velcro and it'll get stuck in reeds and things but that's mega strong will not break inline float um, but I'll definitely do a video on that one day and show you it's something I've stumbled upon several years ago when I was out doing some features with someone and ever since I've said I'll only ever use inline floats if I'm fishing in a snag peg. Um, one day I'll show you exactly why. And um, then the only other thing I've got there are some really, really chunky floats. Again, these are all on 023 line. No nonsense, chunky floats. Maybe fishing cat meat or, or big sort of 10 mil cubes of meat or eight mil pellets in snaggy venues or where there's some real Jurassic fish, you know, 10 pound plus fish. That's when these ones come out. <laughs> and then, the only other rigs I've got are what I class as swinging rigs. Now these are extra long line, these are a, equate to a top four or top five. This is a gram and a half float with a gram, a 1.25 gram olivet 
it's actually on the stem of the float. I don't know if you can see that. I've just fixed it on the stem. There's nothing down the line. And it's for pendulum a rig past the pole. Um, so somewhere like um, Tree Waters in, in, at Whiteacres is quite famous for that. It's 16 metre pole limit, but some of the islands are 17, 18, 19 metres away. And on its day, a, a, a long line swinging pole rig will definitely beat a waggler or a feeder or a bomb. Um, on its day, the weather and everything has to be right, and the wind and and but those hard days when there's no wind and it's flat calm and the fish won't come to a feeder, a long line swinging rig is what you want. So I've got that up to a equivalent to a top four. That's probably six meters long now, but I'll chop it down to suit the peg. Um, and the other rigs I've got, they look horrible how I've packed them away, but that's deliberate. These are little short bottom and only wagglers that I've made. I just trap them so they don't um, so they don't tangle up and then um, stick up in me, in me winder tray. I'll show you a close up of what they actually are. Again, this is something I can do a video on one day. But that, this is a little bottom end only waggler. I've made these years and years ago, probably six, seven, eight years ago now I made these. And all they are is a big um, pole float with a big thick bristle. I've took the side eye off, took the stem out, and I've wedged a diamond eye swivel in the end. And that suddenly becomes a lovely little waggler for swinging. Takes a lot of shot, um, excuse me, and being bottom end only, it casts nice. You can sink the line a little bit and it strikes nice as well. Lovely little float. Um, if conditions are bad, I'll use a big, big ball, big, big float like that, that a gram and a half float. But if conditions are nice, I, I, I love to use these little short wagglers. Got a big, thick two and a half mil bristle there. It would take a six mil pellet or something like that, which is primarily what I'd be fishing at sort of 17, 18 meters, just past the pole swinging. But even if your venue's got a 13 meter pole limit and the island's 14 and a half meters away, that's the sort of rig I would use as well, that sort of float. But I'll do another video on that maybe one day. So uh, that concludes my uh, rigs. I do have other rigs. I've got some other little quirky specials and that, sort of no float rigs and things like that. I don't fish those sorts of venues that tends to be a bit more of a sort of northwestern thing um fishing places with no floats and strange sort of shotted rigs but over shotted floats and all of that so because i'm more midlands based and we have to use a float a correctly shotted float most of the time those rigs are pretty much um <laughs> on the on the subs bench at the moment but there that but that's my specials tray it only comes out at this time of year generally or if i'm going to white takers or somewhere like that then the swinging rigs are always packed but in general this comes out if i'm going somewhere snaggy if i'm going on a fisher mania qualifier somewhere and i i know there's one or two snaggy pegs then this tray must come with me but in the main a lot of the rigs don't get used unless i'm pace fishing which i hopefully do a bit more of this summer but uh yeah so that's my rigs hopefully i haven't uh, frazzled your brains a bit too much showing you all these rigs that i tie but um they've all got a purpose but um hopefully it's given you some pointers and a bit of inspiration for for rigs of your own i will do a rig tying video at some point i keep promising it whilst the weather's not too bad i'm more interested in getting out and going fishing so uh hope you have a good weekend and um don't forget to like and subscribe and uh all your comments and that are always well appreciated and um yeah i'll see you on the next video